Hello, this video will cover properties of logarithms and this video is intended for the class in CBM 0114 and it is for the purpose to help you with chapter 3 of the pre-calculus class math 1314. So we have here three of the rules that we are going to be using. Um, sometimes I actually like to refer to them as property. Some books do that. Some books call it rules. Um, so we have here the product rule, quotient rule, and power rule. So before we explain those, let's just do a quick recap of what happens with exponent. So if you have, let's say, two variables, with different same letter but different exponents and we're multiplying them that would be equal to x to the power 2 plus 3 which is 5. and so if you multiply variables you add the exponents so from there we could say that the product rule has something to do with it and i'm not going to derive it but remember how exponential and logarithmic functions they are inverses of each other and therefore they share a lot of their properties or they're similar. So in this case, we call this product rule um, because we go from the log of a product. Here's the product m times n. And then we expand it into two logs. And in fact, we call this the sum of two logarithmic expressions and so we went from the log of a product to the sum because we're adding two logs now our next rule let's remember what will happen if we were dividing these variables x to the fifth divided by x squared and so in that case, if you divide the letters, you are going to subtract the exponents. So this will be x to the power of 5 minus 2, which will be x to the third power. And so we have this subtraction. And so our quotient rule, what we have here is the log of a quotient, the quotient being the division between m and n. So we call this log of a quotient. And if we expand that, um, it will turn into the difference of two logs. And of course, here we can have more than two logs. We could have three, four, and so on. Now, our third rule here, um, just a little review what happens with exponents. Let's say that you have x to the power 4 here, and then you're squaring that. So what that means is that you will have x squared multiplied by x squared. And so we already know that in this case, we will have to add the exponents 4 plus 4. So that will be x to the power 8. Now, the shortcut to deal with this type of problems, the power of a power, is to multiply those two exponents. So if we had multiplied 4 times 2, that would have given us the x to the power 8 like we did here. So that translated into logarithmic properties, we will see here um, the lowercase p is the exponent of m. And so if we apply the power rule or the power property, that will be brought to the front. And so now it will become the coefficient of the logarithmic expression. So it will go from being an exponent to being a coefficient. And it is important to know these rules because we can solve exponential logarithmic equations. We could, um, in fact, we could go from left to right and right to left. And the process of that, and that may be how you get asked questions on your homework or your test. If the question says something like expand, then that means to go from left to right. But they could also say condense, and that will imply to go from right 
to left. So in this case, from the difference of two logs into the log of a quotient. Condensing, some books also refer to it as write as a single logarithm. So if it does say single logarithm, make sure you only have that abbreviation for logarithm, log, which is written once. So now let's get to the examples. And for example one here, we're going to be expanding. So the first thing that we see here is uh, 9 as the exponent of 3. 3 is the argument where you're taking the log of. And so if I use the power property, I will bring this 9 to the front. So now it will be the coefficient of my logarithmic expression. So this will be 9 times the log of 3 base 6. And that's it. Now for the next one, we have the log of a product. The product is 7 times 11. So this will be expanded into the sum of two logs. So it will be the log of 7 base 6 plus the log of 11 base 6. For number 3, we have the log of a quotient, 23 divided by x. And so if we expand this one, it will be the log of 23 base 8 minus the log of x base 8. Now, how do we know which one will have the negative sign in front of it? And so that will be um, known if that variable is in the denominator of the logarithmic expression, of the argument of the logarithmic expression. And so in that case, that's how we knew that the log of x will have been preceded by that negative sign. Okay, now for the next one, we have a common logarithm. And we call common logarithm uh, the logarithms that don't have a base written, but we know that there is an implied 10. And so what I'm going to do here is to expand it. It will be the log of 100 base 10. And then here we have the product of 100 times x. So it makes sense that I expand it into the sum of two logs. So this will be log of x base 10 as well. And so one thing that I can do here to simplify it even further is I can rewrite 100 such as 10 square. And the reason I want to do that is because there is a rule that states that if you are taking the log of a number such as 10 and this is of the same base, base 10, then you can cancel that out and the answer is just whatever was the exponent. So this will end up being 2 plus, and then here we could just write the whole expression log of x. Now at this point, it's necessary to write the base because we already know that if you leave the base blank, it's already an implied 10. Example number five, it has a natural log, and natural log ln, that is um, the same of a logarithm of base e. And so here we have e to the fifth, and here we have 11. So what you can see here is the log of a quotient, quotient or the ratio being e to the fifth divided by 11. So if we go ahead and expand that, it will be the natural log of e to the fifth. And now since 11 is down here, is the denominator of this quotient, that means that I need a negative sign in front of my next. Um, logarithmic expression. And remember, it's base E, so we are using its own special abbreviation, which is LN for natural log. And this will be minus the natural log of 11. Now, just like we use that rule here that we were taking the log of 10 and the base was 10, here remember if it is an LN, natural log is the base E. And so we're taking the log of E of the same base. We could cross that out and our answer will just be 5. So to simplify this even further, we will have 5 minus natural log of 11. Now our next expression, the only thing we could do here, and, and this is, um, please do not be confused that you could do the following, log of x plus log of 4. Um, the reason that you cannot is because you do not have the log of a product. In fact, you have the log of an addition of two numbers. So this will be totally wrong if you, if you use it. Um, what only thing we can do here is use the power property that states that we can take the exponent to the front and then it becomes the coefficient of the logarithmic expression. 
And that's it. That's all we can do with that one. Now for example two, we're going to do the opposite. And in this case, we're going to be condensing or writing as a single logarithm. So for that, it's very important that you only have the word log written once on your final answer. So here we see the log, the difference of two logs. And so what that implies is the log of a quotient. Now, how do I know where, what is the numerator? And so that will be whatever has a positive sign in front of the prefix log. So 7x plus 6 will go here. And this one has negative log of x, so that implies that x will be here on the bottom. Now, this one will stay like that. You could simplify it a little bit more if you do the following, 7x divided by x, but also 6 is divided by x. So don't just go ahead and um, cancel your x's from here. Um, so if you wish to cancel x, you have to be careful and divide both terms by x. So in this case, it will be 7 plus 6 over x. Um, either answer will be correct, this one or this one. Now, the next problem, we're going to um, work in steps. So first, we're going to use the power property in reverse. So we're going to bring that ex uh, coefficient and make it the exponent of x minus 3. So I'm going to do that. So this will be log of x minus 3 parentheses and then we put that 2 from coefficient we put it here as an exponent then i'm just going to rewrite this here and then on the next row now you can see we have the difference of two logs and so that will be condensed into the log of a quotient so this will be x minus 3 square and then divided by x. And that will be the final answer. Um, it's important to mention that the only way you can condense is if your logarithmic expressions have the same base. So this is a 10, this is a 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10. OK, so let's do the last one here. So we have the log of actually is the sum of two logs, the addition of two logs, and those get condensed as the log of a product. In this case, the product is going to be 25 times 4. And so 25 times 4, we all know, is 100. Now, we don't have the base here, but we already said that it was an implied 10. And what I'm going to try to do is rewrite 100 so that it is 10 to a certain power, and that will give me the answer here. So if I write base 10, and 100 is the same as 10 to the second power. So I can use that rule, and the answer will be 2. Also, to answer this type of question, you could ask yourself, to what power do I need to raise 10 so that I can get 100? And the answer is 2. So actually, to simplify this one, uh, to condense, of course, it will be um, this one here. But if possible, if we can simplify it and find a numerical, um, like a set number, um, then you go ahead and try it. And that might be the answer the web assign is asking you to find. So the answer here will be 2. Okay, so let's go to the next page. And right here we have um, one of the one-to-one -one properties for solving exponential equations by expressing each side as a power of the same base. So here we, we have b to the power m is equal to b to the power n. So if, if we have that statement and we're saying that they're equal or we're being told that they're equal, then it must be true that the exponents are also equal because b is equal to b so then the exponent exponents m and n are also equal so we're going to be solving some uh, equations that way 
And we have here the first one is uh, 5 to the power 3x minus 6, and we have 125. Now we have here the base is 8, and here the base is 4. So on, the, on part C, we have a base 4 and a base 15. So we're going to write down some steps that will be helpful when we're countering something that will be considered like bases. Now, we're going to write down some of the powers. For example, 2 to the first, we all know is 2. Um, so we're going to write the powers of a base 2. Let's write the powers of a base 3. And let's write the powers of a base 5. Of course, we could use other numbers like 4, 6, um, you name it. So here we have 2 squared, that will be 4. 2 to the third, that will be 8. 2 to the fourth, it will be 16. 2 to the fifth, it will be 32. And I'm going to stop there because that's um, the room I have there. Now let's try with 3. So 3 to the first power is just 3. We have 3 squared is equal to 9. And we have 3 to the third power is equal to 27. And we have 3 to the fourth power is equal to 81. Now for base 5, we have 5 to the first power is 5. 5 squared is 25. And 5 to the third power is equal to 125. And we're just going to stop there for the purpose of this lesson. So the first thing we are going to do is look at our bases and see if, we, if there's a way to rewrite them using the same base. So first step will be to rewrite the numbers using the same base. So you could see clearly that 5 and 125, it is possible to rewrite them because we could use 5 to the first power or simply 5 for the left side, and we could use 5 to the third power for the right side. So we're going to try to do that. So in this case, it will just still be 5 to the power 3x minus 6. And here we will have 5 to the third power. Now, the second step will be to, if necessary, you know, you will have to manipulate the exponents. Um, so we could say, Simplify exponents. And then um, we will use, once you have the same base on the left and the same base on the right, just like we have this property here, I'm going to write it again. It says b to the power m is equal to b to the power n. If that happens, then is because the exponents are equal because we know that b is equal to b. So then we create another equation that will say m is equal to m. And so that is the case that we're going to do here. So we're going to use exponents to solve the equation. And the reason we could do this is by the one to one property. So we know for sure that five is equal to five. So therefore, the exponent 3x minus six is equal to the exponent three. So now to solve this, we're going to have 3x is equal to 3. This negative 6 from the left, if we move it across the equal sign, it will be adding, so plus 6. So this will give me that 3x is equal to 9. Now we need to solve for x, 
So the three is mine to the X. So if I take that across the equal sign, it would be dividing. And so in this case, it will give me three. So X is equal to three. Now let's move on to part B. And for part B, we have the base eight and the base four. Now, both of those numbers are actually powers of two. And we have here that the number eight is gonna get substituted with two to the third power. And the number four is gonna get substituted with two squared. So let's start by doing that. Here we have two to the third power. And here we have two to the second power. However, we can't just forget about our exponents. So what I need to do is I'm gonna write these numbers in parentheses. Remember eight is being substituted with two to the third power. So then I need to write down the exponent still here outside. We cannot just forget about it. And then the exponent for um, number four, it will be x minus three. And the reason I'm putting it in parentheses because we're going to use a rule, the power of a power that states that you need to multiply your exponents. Now, this could be a little tricky because you have to make sure to distribute the exponent inside to the exponent outside. So in this case, we will have 2 to the power 3 times x is 3x. And then three times two, so that will be a six. Now on the right side, we're gonna have a two to the power two times x is two x. And then two times negative three is negative six. So now we have the base two on both sides. So we could go ahead and assume that the exponents are equal. And so we're gonna create a linear equation and this will say 3x plus 6 is equal to 2x minus 6. Now, what I'm going to try to do is um, keep my x terms on one side. So 3x, I'm going to take this positive 2x to the left. So it will be negative 2x. And then here on my right side, I'm going to have 6. Actually, it's a negative 6. And then this positive 6 taken to the right side will be another negative 6. Um, so now I have 3x minus 2x, that will give me 1x. And then on the left side, I have negative 6 minus 6, so that will be minus 12. Now, if you have an exponential equation, you could have a positive or a negative solution or even zero. Um, however, if this was a logarithmic equation, we couldn't do that. Okay, now the next problem, I might not have enough room to solve it here, so I'm gonna write it below. And that is four to the power X is equal to 15. Now, the number four and the number 15 do not have any bases in common. So what we're gonna have to do here first is take the natural log on both sides. In fact, whenever you don't know what to do, this is a good way to start. Take the ln on both sides. Let's write it down. The next step is going to be to use the power property that states that the exponent goes from being the power to being the coefficient. So that x goes here to the front. So now it's multiplying to the expression natural log of 4. And here we have the natural log of 15. Um, now you see here that x is being multiplied by this whole thing, natural log of 4. So if I want to take that natural log of 4 across the other side, it will be doing the inverse operation, which is division. Now, with this one, it's very important that you do not confuse it with the natural log of 15 over 4. 
um, this will be completely wrong. You must have natural log on both. And so to enter this on your calculator, you have to make sure that you press LN twice, one for the numerator and one for the denominator. So let's continue writing the rules here. So the first step was to take the LN on both sides. Then second, we applied the power property. And then um, third, what do we do third? Oh, yeah, we divide it. Divide to solve for x. Um, and then I guess for it will be to approximate your solution on the calculator. Now, if WebAssign or my math lab, whatever platform you're using, is asking you for the exact answer, this one will be the exact answer with LN on both, numerator and denominator. And do not even think about crossing out LN. That cannot be separated from their um, respective number. So you leave that like that. That's the exact answer. To get an approximation, you could enter that on your calculator. And then just make sure you read a few common decimals in round two. Okay, so now for example four, uh, example four happens to be um, the same question. So we already know the answer. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to get my calculator and let's go ahead and get an approximation for it. And so recall that the exact answer was the natural log of 15 over the natural log of four. And so, we get approximately 1.953. If we were to round to three decimal places. Okay, so the next problem we have a five and a 134. So obviously we cannot rewrite them using the same base, base five. So we're gonna have to do the same step. So first we take the natural log on both sides. Then we use the power property. So we're gonna bring that exponent to the front. And remember, this cannot be separated, ln and 5. They go together, and they're actually multiplying to the x. And so you already know what to do. we got to do the inverse operation. So natural log of 5 multiplying on the left. If we take it to the right, it will be dividing. Now here, do not even think, oh, and I just made a mistake. This should be a 4. Sorry. So don't do that. Um, don't think about simplifying the numbers. Uh, you just enter that on the calculator, and that should give you the correct answer. So you will enter ln twice. And so if you do that correctly, we will get an approximation. In this case, we have natural log of 1. 34 divided by the natural log of 5, and that will give us 3.0432, and that will be if we were asked to run to the um, four decimal places. The exact answer will be this one here. Okay, now the next one. Mm, Another thing we could do here, instead of just taking the natural log, we could take the common log, which is um, a base 10. So 8,000. Now, same steps. We take the 
uh, power property, or in fact, this will be a lot easier. We don't, we're not gonna use the power property. We could, and then just solve it like we solved um, A and B, but we're gonna do something easier. We assume that is a 10 because it's a common log. And so we go back to that rule that states that if the argument, the big number, when that you take the log off and the base, the little number, are the same, the exponent. So in this case, the exponent just happens to be x. So therefore, the answer to this will be the common log of 8,000. Now, your calculator has that button. It should be on the left column. Um, so you press the button, log, and then you enter 8,000. Um, by the way, this will be the exact answer. The approximation will be 3.903. One, if we were to round to four decimal places. And that is the end of the second page. Now let's go to our last one. And here we have example five. Um, 75, it cannot be, it cannot be written with a, with a base five because five to the second power is 25, and then five to the third power is 125. So we're like somewhere in between. So what we're gonna do instead is um, take the natural log, so natural log of five to the x is equal to the natural log of 75. Now we're gonna use the power property bring this to the front so that will be x times the natural log of 5 is equal to the natural log of 75. Now from here we know this is multiplying to the x so to solve for x it will be enough to move it across and it will be dividing so natural log of 75 divided by the natural log of 5. That will be the exact solution. And please don't try to simplify this quantity because you cannot separate 75 from natural log and you cannot separate 5 from natural log. So to solve that on the calculator, make sure you do enter ln twice, ln of 75 divided by, and then you enter ln again, and that will be a 5. Um, so with that, we will get an approximation. So it will be the natural log of 75 divided by the natural log of 5. And so that will give us approximately 2.6826. Okay, now next question. Same thing. Take the natural log on both sides. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna apply the power property. So we're gonna bring that exponent to the front. So it's gonna be 3x times the natural log of parentheses, 2 plus 7 over 25, close parentheses. Remember, the exponent was moved to the front, so now it's like a coefficient. And here on our right side, we still just have natural log of 4. Okay, so from here, um, you can see that we are trying to solve for x x is the one we want to isolate, leave by itself. And so I'm going to write what I already have on the right side, which is this, natural log of 4. And I'm going to divide by the things that are multiplying to the x on the left side. So in this case, I'm talking about 3. 3 is multiplying. So it comes down here, dividing. 
then this expression ln of 2 plus 7 over 25 is also multiplying to the x because there's no sign in between them. So it implies multiplication. So if I take that whole thing across, this whole thing, it's going to give me natural log of 2 plus 7 over 25, like that. Now, to enter this on a calculator, you have to be very careful with the parentheses. And so, um, of course, you start by entering your natural log, parentheses, four parentheses. Then you want to divide this. And then you want to use an extra set of parentheses just to enclose the denominator. And then here we will enter three. There's no need to put a sign in between. The calculator will understand that this implies multiplication, three and then ln after. Um, then here we have to open another parentheses to enclose the argument of the natural log. So two plus. And then I'm going to put another set of parentheses right here to enclose the fraction 7 over 25. So I close that for the fraction. I close another one to enclose the argument of the natural log. And then I'm going to close one more time to enclose the denominator. So you end up with a triple parentheses closing. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and get an approximation of this. This might take me a little bit longer. Um, if you have your calculator, it would be great if you could practice at the same time. So natural log of 4 divided by parentheses 3 times the natural log of parentheses 2 plus parentheses 7 over 25, and then we close with a triple parentheses. And what I get from here, it is 0 0.5607. Okay, so we only have four left to go. So for the next one, we're going to use the one-to-one -one property. We already have E on the left, E on the right. Recall that E is a number. E is approximately 2.71. However, when you're doing your homework, do not use that approximation because you do have a button for E. So what we just do here is um, by using that one-to-one -one property, if the bases are equal, then the exponents must be equal as well. And so we have that. So then 8x is going to be equal to 4. This negative 6 is subtracting on the left. So if I cross it, it will be adding on the right side. So therefore, we will have 8x is equal to 10. And now to finish, um, x is going to be equal to 10 divided by 8. If we want to simplify this answer, it will be 5 divided by 4. And if web assign is asking for an exact answer, it's just better to leave it as a fraction. Okay, so now our next um, equation is a logarithmic equation. So one thing we can do here is use our power property in reverse. So this 3, that is the coefficient of the logarithmic expression on the left, I can move it back over here, and now it's going to be the exponent of 6x. So log of 6x to the power 3 is equal to 9. And let's not forget the base is 4. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to convert from um, logarithmic expression into a, an exponential one. And so for that, whatever is the base of your logarithmic expression will also be the base of your exponential one. Now, in this case, we don't want the four and the six x together anymore. So that makes us, um, that makes us, um, makes the nine be the exponent that will go here. And then we put the rest here, six x 
over 3. In fact, I just thought about an easier way to solve this one. Um, I hate to do this, but it's, it's, it's way better if we do it this way. Um, we, we will get the same answer, um, but this will be a lot easier because if we were to raise 4 to the power 9, we will get a pretty big number. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to make us have a smaller exponent. Okay, so let's try this again. So what I'm going to do instead, um, and I should have done this from the beginning, we have this number 3 multiplying the log expression. And so if I take that 3 across, you already know it's going to be dividing. So log of 6x base 4 is equal to 9 over 3. So we all know that 9 over 3 is equal to 3. So now we're going to go ahead and change our um, expression to a logarithmic expression. So this 4 is the base of the log, happens to also be the base of the exponential expression. Um, we actually do call this the answer of a log. It's called the exponent. So that will go here. And then the argument is going to be here. So now we could calculate 4 to the power 3 in our head because that will be 4 times 4 times 4. And that will be equal to 64. So 64 is equal to 6x. Now you see how 6 is multiplying to the x. So if I take that 6 across the equal sign, it's going to do the inverse operation, which is division. And so we will get x is equal to 64 divided by 6. Now, if my math lab, um, I'm sorry, or web assign is asking you for an exact answer, that would be an exact answer, but you know that they're going to require for you to simplify it. So 64 divided by 4 is 16. Well, 6 cannot be divided by 4, so never mind. Um, let's try dividing by 2. So 64 divided by 2 is 32. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 32 thirds. That will be the exact answer. Now, if they ask you to enter it as a decimal, then just, you know, do it and make sure you round accordingly. Okay, our last, oh, second to last problem um, we're going to have, well, actually, let's do the last one first. Now, let's do E. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, you notice that we have the difference of two logs because I have, we have that minus in between. And so we're going to condense them like we were doing at the beginning of the section. And this is going to turn into the log of a quotient. So we put X on top because X has that plus in front of it. And then we put the x minus 1 over here as the denominator. Now, let's not forget the base was 4. That is equal to 1 half. Now, to solve this equation on the previous one, we went from logarithmic to exponential. That's what we did. Now, sometimes it's more convenient to go the other way. So what we're going to do is go from, um, actually, it's, it's the exact same thing from logarithmic to exponential, sorry about that. Um, so we start here with the base, which is four. This little number becomes the big number here. And then the one half, that happens to be the exponent that goes here. And then here, the argument of the logarithm becomes uh, what goes on this side. Now, when you have an exponent that is a fraction, that implies a root. Since this is one half, we're talking about the square root because the denominator tells you what type of root it is. If it's a two, it's a square root. If it's a three, it will be a cube root. So we have the square root of four is equal to x over x minus one. Now, what we do here is with this x minus one, you see it's dividing to the x or is dividing on the right side. So if we move that across, it's going to be multiplying. But before that, let's go ahead and solve this. What is the square root of 4? And so we are going to say that it is 2 
And it could also be negative 2. So let me do this here, plus minus. Let's try with positive 2 first. And so we have this x divided by x minus 1. So now what I was saying, taking this x minus 1 from the right to the left, so it goes from, multi from division to multiplication. I have to keep it in parentheses like this. And then what I'm going to do now is distribute the 2. So I mean multiply it 2 times x and 2 times negative 1. And so that will give me 2x minus 2 is equal to x. Now, to solve for this linear equation, all we need to do is um, put our x's on one side. So we have 2x, take this positive across, and that will be negative x. And then on our right side, this negative 2, take it across, it will be a positive 2. Now, here, combine like terms, 2x minus x is 1x equals 2. Now, what would happen if we try with negative 2? So if this was a negative 2, and we have this. And then we do the same step. So we're going to distribute. So this will be negative 2x minus, and actually plus 2 is equal to x. Now, if we want to um, keep our x's together, um, what I will do is take this one to this side. And so that will give me 2 is equal to x plus 2x. And so this will be 3x is equal to 2. So that tells me that x is equal to 2 divided by 3. And so in this case, um, why? Because we took the square root of 4, and that could be a positive or a negative 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4. four. Okay, now finally, our last problem. Um, we do have log written twice on the left and the right. So there's another amazing one-to-one -one property for log, so we could literally just cancel that. And what happens is the argument becomes a linear equation that easy now if you don't know how to solve linear equations then i don't know what to tell you so we have 3x plus 4. it is more convenient if i do keep my x's on the left because 3x is bigger than x so i'm going to have 3x this positive x taken across will become negative x or it goes from adding to subtracting here on the right side, let's write this negative 10 first that we already have here. And then this positive 4, we move it to the right, it will be negative 4. So let's see what happens here. 3x minus x, 2x, negative 14. And then finally, the 2 is multiplying to the x. And so what we need to do is divide. So negative 14 divided by 2. So that will give me negative 7. And I'm actually going to check. OK, so let's see. Here, we do have a negative solution. And, and that, even though that's what we got from the linear equation, if we were to substitute it back into our original, let's say here, log of x minus 10. So if we substitute what we got for x, which is a negative number, it will be the log of negative 7 minus 10. Now that, and I'm so out of space, but that will be the same as the log of negative 17. Now, if we were to put that in the calculator, you will get an error or maybe a message that says no real solution or you might get undefined. Well, the reason for that is that you cannot take the log of a negative number. You can only take the log of a positive number, um, any number that is greater than zero. And that is why. In fact, the function 
for logarithms, it goes like this, and it does have a vertical asymptote right here on the x-axis, I'm um, sorry, the y-axis, which is the line x equals zero. And because of that, the range of this function happens to be from zero to infinity without including zero. So the number could be still very small, but not negative. And so for that reason, this answer that we found, we just say, uh, we discard that option. We don't have any other option there, any other answer. And so we just say no solution for that one. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching.